Him and uh, let's do that right now in prayer and asking Him to speak to our hearts in a special way and to make Himself known in our midst this uh, morning. Brother David, would you stand and lead us in this opening prayer? Our Father, our God, we just want to come before your presence this morning, Lord, as we're opening this service, Lord, that we want to do everything, Lord, to, to build your name, to lift your name up, Lord, because you are the only one that's worthy. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity and thank you for the, the, each individual that's here this morning, Lord, whether it's our home folks, Lord, or, or Lord, our visitors, Lord, to uh, make them feel at home, Lord, as we worship together. Uh, we pray that everything that happens today, Lord, everything in the music, everything in the giving of the offering, Lord, and everything in the preaching, Lord, will be to the edify of your kingdom, Lord, that we may come, Lord, and bring our worship with us, Lord, that we have one focus and one point of view today, and that's the presence your name. Yes. Be with us as we worship, Lord, that you be edified, encourage each soul, Lord, and may we leave here a better Christian than what we arrived at. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I am glad to be in God's house uh, this morning, and uh, we're glad to see you, and we welcome each and every one of you. And uh, once again today, praise the Lord, uh, we have several families I've already uh, noticed and tried to speak to uh, uh, you that are back uh, for the first time and uh, in several weeks. So welcome back, and I'm so glad to have you back in service with us. It's also, uh, uh, I'm inside, I'm trying to spit it out, I'm so excited I can't spit it out, but also good. Uh, to have some first-time guests with us today, and as well as some returning uh, visitors here at Wildwood. So we just welcome you into the family of God and to the church family this morning, and so glad you're with us. If you will so kindly fill out that connection card, if this is your first time uh, visiting here or first time in a long time, if you'll fill out that visitor's card while I go over some announcements with our folks, we appreciate that so very much, and you can uh, 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 give that to one of our ushers that if end of the service and we thank you for being here today and again to our families who have been out we welcome you back in a special way so good to see you back in god's house and uh, to be together once again all right a few things by way of announcement it's an exciting time and a very busy time of ministry and so we want to bring some things uh, to your attention make sure you're seeing them in uh, the bulletin at, uh, uh, each week and uh, the things that are in weeks ahead all right this week Brother Tim has a junior activity plan, and uh, I, I believe a cookout and kickball is what I've heard, but he has all the details on that. If you'll see him and uh, catch him this afternoon or this evening, and uh, he can give you more details on that, but that is the 27th, and we're looking uh, forward to our kids being able to be involved in that. And then on April 3rd, I'll go ahead and jump to that one, is going to be our uh, egg hunt uh, that we do for the kids, and uh, we'll have a cookout then as well. Eka and then Brother Tim, Brother Caleb will have some games uh, scheduled for the kids, okay? So this is an outside event, and uh, we are nailing down, uh, uh, Lord willing, this week, uh, the location of that, and so we will uh, let you know uh, exactly the address where that will be once we get that verified, and uh, that is April 3rd, uh, that Saturday morning from 11 to 1. Uh, will be the slotted time for that, so keep that in mind. Uh, this is obviously a great event for our church uh, to be a part of, but also a great community event, and uh, so we're trying to maximize our potential and being centralized location uh, to invite the community and those that may be out uh, and about that morning uh, to join us, so keep that in mind, okay? And then uh, we'll just go ahead and stay on that weekend on April 4th. We will uh, we'll, we'll go back to our Sunrise SON service. Uh, at 8.30, uh, there'll be an outside service that we'll have at 8.30, and uh, they'll have breakfast after that, and then 
then uh, our morning worship following. So uh, keep that in mind. And uh, the number uh, before before we had to take a break last year, that number had been growing at the 8.30 service, and I think we had 60 or so uh, uh, last time we were able to do that. So we pray the Lord, it's always a sweet time of worship. Trust that you can join us for that. All right, we're back up to uh, now the 28th, and uh, uh, which is next Sunday night. Uh, uh, Lord willing, we'll have, uh, that is our slot of time for communion and uh, feet washing, and uh, so we'll plan uh, for that. If that needs to be adjusted for uh, for whatever reason, we will let you know, and uh, we'll plan to get that uh, in, uh, in, in completion uh, this time, so look forward to that time as well. All right, then I need your help with two things, all right? First of all, I need your help with uh, any um, sheets, uh, quilts, or old comforters uh, that you have uh, that we can use as dust covers um, this next week, okay? If you walk through uh, the new building this morning, you saw most of the floor, or well, the floor in the lobby is done, and Monday they're supposed to complete that hallway, uh, but we need to go ahead, based on timing for some of the subs, start setting some of the furniture in there, And um, but we need to keep it all covered, obviously, and um, so we need um, some old sheets, uh, quilts uh, or comforters uh, that you have uh, that you could uh, bring, all right? And if you could start bringing those as early as this evening when you come back, uh, that would be awesome. Uh, you can um, just set them in uh, the lobby area over there in the new building, and we'll be able to get that and be able to cover everything, not only to keep it protected from dust, but also um, from they, as they come back to work on their punch list and such up to keep them from being damaged as well. All right, so can you help us with that? Just bring what you have that you don't mind us using. If you uh, want it back, just make sure your name is on the underside of it somewhere, last name, and uh, that way we can make sure it gets back to you um, if you desire to have that back. But if you could help us with that starting this evening, uh, that would be uh, great. And uh, we told the contract that we would have things covered. Uh, just, you know, so they don't have to worry about it as well. So we need your help with that because uh, we have some, but we don't have that many, all right? And uh, so if you can help us with that starting tonight, we'd appreciate that very much. And then also starting tonight, it really starts this morning because uh, I need to catch you afterwards, but um, we've contacted uh, those that uh, have been and have expressed interest in being uh, in our choir, and we are starting the choir back, amen? And uh, uh, been long past due, and uh, so we're excited about that. So we are planning uh, to sing on Resurrection Sunday for the first time. So choir members, that gives us two weeks, okay, to knock off all the dust and get all the cobwebs out and uh, uh, be ready to minister. And the songs that we have chosen, we have all on CD here for you. There's four songs on the CD. Uh, we're going to be trying to sing three of those uh, uh, on Resurrection Sunday, two of them which are familiar or should be familiar to most of you, and so I feel that we can tackle this, but that means we got to jump right on it, okay? So this morning, before you leave, we want you to have this CD in hand. We appreciate Brother Caleb making these for us, um, one per family to start with. We can certainly make more, but we want to make sure everybody can start listening to this app, uh, these songs this afternoon. I've already played through them several times, and I tell you what, it's just like I'm ready to, when I'm riding in the truck, you know, I'm ready to, it's, it's awesome, it gets on. And uh, so choir members, please get one of these, and then that means tonight, if you'll help us, I know it's a little different, and uh, but again, we don't have much time left to play with, um, but we need to have uh, our first rehearsal tonight. Uh, but rather than, uh, than and throwing on you this afternoon, we're going to go after church uh, uh, for, for the, today, and so right after the service, uh, we will meet uh, the choir, and um, uh, what we do, we'll probably meet out here, and so we we'll ask all those that are fellowshipping just to walk down the hallway and fellowship in the new sanctuary, and uh, so we can go uh, over these songs, start going over them right away in the choir. So uh, for those of you that um, have already been uh, involved or you express interest, we've tried to contact you and uh, to hear back from each of you. Uh, let's try to do that tonight, okay? Get these today, and then let's go uh, over those songs after church. Uh, this evening, and it will try not to be long, but just try to listen to them several times. And we're excited. We're excited, excited. I believe that's going to be uh, a, a strong ministry again, just as it was in uh, the past. All right. That's all by way of announcements, I believe, uh, except for I'll draw your attention uh, uh, one more time each week to uh, the wedding shower on April 18th. And uh, it's hard to believe that uh, one more uh, Sunday in March, and then we're in April. And uh, we want to take care of Brother Caleb and Miss Hannah, and it's very exciting. And busy time in their life. So let's be a blessing to them. This is a church-wide shower. And we'll have, ladies, you bring the, the food uh, uh, 
uh, for that evening, and I'll take care of all that. And let's jump on the registry list for those. All that detail is uh, mentioned there in the bulletin. Let's jump on that, and uh, let's take care of the items they need. So far, God has been providing and uh, uh, with what they need, and I know He'll use us as a local church uh, to help be a blessing. Uh, to Brother Caleb and Miss Hannah as they begin their journey together. All right, let me invite you to take your Bibles real quick for our scripture reading this morning and uh, go ahead and turn to Saul. I'll uh, tell you as a chapter, you're going to feel like you might not need it, but uh, it's good to read and see uh, the words and hear them again. Psalm 23, one of the most beloved Psalms and uh, such a comfort to all of us at different times in our life. Before reading this morning, I want us to read Psalm 23, starting in verse 1. The Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Aren't you thankful for his restoration? He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou, the great shepherd, art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, the psalmist concludes, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a wonderful, comforting, sweet passage of scripture uh, that although may be used at different times in our life, I want to remind you morning it's good for every day of our life and I trust that's a blessing father would you use your word or this morning to comfort us we thank you that you do prepare a table for us we do thank you that you're with us lord in the darkest and deepest of valleys we know that you're with us and that we thank you for being the great shepherd for providing for us and protecting us but we just have so much uh, to be thankful for so God, we acknowledge you, we invite you once again to make yourself known in this worship service. Lord, we're here, all about you. And I pray as we continue to worship you in song, uh, Lord, you'll receive our praise. Lord, from our heart, I pray as we, uh, Lord, talk about, uh, preach on Wednesday night, Lord, that with our whole heart, uh, we will worship you, you know, realizing the opportunity that we have. Lord, to engage in worship uh, to an almighty, awesome God. We love you. Thank you for your love for us. In your son's precious name, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Let's stand together again, if you will. Hymn 294. 294. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. Let's sing three verses of this song to
thank God. Good singing, let's we'll continue to worship the Lord uh, in our giving. We we'll commend you for your faithfulness to give, we'll challenge you to continue uh, to be faithful. And uh, you can utilize any of our uh, avenues of giving, of course, for us in purpose or uh, in, in uh, service. It, uh, it's, it's easiest to uh, come and give uh, here, so I invite you to do that. Uh, if you're watching online, you can give online by going to wildwoodfamily.org being that online giving tab, and you can give that way, or you can mail it in, uh, bring it in, uh, which many of you have been doing is such a blessing during this time. So uh, let's be faithful. It's our regular time and offerings, and I know God will continue to bless the faithfulness of his people as, a, as we give uh, to his wife. So let's say the blessing, and once we do uh, over the offering, we'll start with section one. Uh, if you'll come forward, then section two, then section three, and we'll give in that. All right, let's pray. Brother Barry, would you please? Father, we thank you for this day you've given us, Lord. We thank you for our good Sunday school while we've had. And we thank you, Lord, that we can come to a place and worship with fellow believers, Lord, and that we can be in a full church, Lord, and, and hear your word and hear your yes, the music, yes. Lord, play your honor. We just thank you for that. Let's pray that these tithes, offerings, and that this church continue to serve you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Miss our junior and children's church at this time. Uh, kids, if you'll help us quietly go to the back, we appreciate Brother Tim and the rotating teachers that help us on a weekly basis. They're going to continue our good church over there. And aren't you thankful for our musicians? Don't they do a wonderful job? And we're uh, so thankful for the musicians God has blessed us with here at Wildwood and for their help. And uh, I'm, I'm ready for to hear them fill up uh, the new sanctuary uh, with. Uh, the talents God has given them, so exciting, and uh, my wife was doing all she could, she was asking them, uh, at least let's do the music over there this morning, <laughs> and uh, I was having a hard time getting her off, uh, those uh, keys over there, but I'm thankful for that, thanks for the Lord's provision uh, there in that area, and so, uh, amen, aren't you glad to be a part of the family of God, and I, I'm blessed every week, and I hope you don't see it as a hindrance, I'm blessed every week. To both see our kids in service with us and uh, then to see them get up as they go to have their uh, Bible lesson and those Tim preaching. What a blessing that is uh, to see God working amongst our kids. I'm so thankful. All right, since you come at this time, 
I was sharing the song the Lord led on her heart. It's going to be a blessing. Sure, it's the 
Chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9, please. While you're turning there, let me both thank you and challenge you. <clears throat> we had our first speaker come in and challenge us in the way of transition. And wow, you, you came through. And in fact, that day, our attendance that night was almost as good as our attendance that morning. <laughs> And uh, which, by the way, wouldn't be a bad thing anyhow. <laughs> wouldn't be a bad thing anyhow. Amen. Well, what a blessing. And, uh, and uh, man, a very practical <coughs> challenge. And I wrote some stuff down to just kind of remind us of those. We have our second opportunity. Uh, and this will be a real test of our faith and commitment, right? Because our speaker uh, is no stranger, Preacher Dan. He's out preaching all day today. Hence, we could not do it to, uh, this evening. Uh, so he'll be taking our Wednesday night slot. All right, so here's the tip. All right, here's the tip. Will you be back at uh, Wednesday night? But it's so important, not just for as leaders and lay leaders, but as our body, the whole body, as Paul talked about. Uh, you can pick up something. Now, I picked up multiple things from our first uh, uh, service uh, that challenged me, and I want to sharpen my sword. And so be here tonight. All right, don't leave me hanging tonight, okay? Be here tonight, uh, but be here Wednesday night. We'll have our second uh, preacher coming in challenging us uh, to be best prepare ourselves as we make this transition. And uh, if you pick nothing else but a gold nugget up that can help you and your family, what a blessing, all right? So don't miss out on what God <clears throat> wants to do in your life and in our church. It takes all of us rolling together. We know the analogy that's made with the body. All right, Matthew chapter 9. So good to have you in God's house. We join our Lord in a time in his ministry that is very busy and very exciting. All right, sounds familiar, doesn't it? Uh, but our Lord, I'm going to give you just quickly some things that he has been uh, doing uh, during this time. But uh, it was a time where he was gaining popularity, if you will, and I don't use that word lightly, but uh, more and more people were hearing about what he was doing, they were seeing what he was doing, and they either wanted to, to be involved firsthand, or maybe to even be one uh, that he would touch and heal, and so his, his uh, uh, following was growing, and people were very interested and curious what was going on, and so as Jesus now ministered, understand at this point, he was followed by great crowds. Uh, wanting to see what was going to happen next, who was he going to touch, how was he going to heal them. They were eager. They were eager to catch a glimpse of Jesus. And I like that. I hope we're eager today. Uh, I hope we're eager to hear from the Lord. And that's certainly uh, the place we find the crowd that was following him. And then we see him speaking with authority. And I think that's what partly captivated them, is they knew this wasn't just another. All right, this was the one true son of God. And uh, so he had that authority that he spoke with uh, while he was doing the healings and provisions. All right, Matthew chapter 9, if you're physically able, would you stand with us 
to honor the reading of God's Word. We're going to jump down to verse 35 and just read the last four verses of this text together. Matthew chapter 9, starting in verse 35. The Bible says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, notice what your Bible says, he was moved with compassion on them. You don't mind highlighting and marking in your Bible if it's not already done, a great phrase to highlight. He was moved with compassion on them. Because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is precious, but the laborers are, help me, few. But then notice what it says in verse 38. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. We'll zero in on that phrase. He, when saw the multitudes, was moved with compassion. And I want to preach to you on having the heart of Jesus. Having the heart of Jesus. Thank you, Daddy. You may be seated. And let's pray again. Our Father, we love you. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for you already manifested your presence here this morning and ministered to our hearts. We do not take this opportunity and this responsibility lightly to preach your word. Most important part of our week. We're so blessed to commend Lord, the faithfulness of your people this morning. So thrilled in our hearts to welcome back many of our church family that uh, several families not been able to be with us over several weeks, so we're so glad to have them back as well. Well, I pray you'll captivate all of our minds and hearts as we preach your word, or to truly help us to, to work at, and develop, and pray for, and desire, having the heart that you display here in this all-important, busy time of your ministry. You remind us of why you came and why we are here. Lord, speak to our hearts. Help us be receptive. Lord, we don't want to shovel this off to somebody else this morning. We want to rake it in and allow you to work in our hearts and make change in our lives so we can be more like you. The Father, speak as only you can. I'm just your messenger boy this morning, so I pray that you would hide me behind the cross. No one's come to hear me this morning. We've come to hear from you. I want your spirit to work and to move, so I pray to penetrate our minds and hearts, speak to us, challenge us, and help us to be obedient to you as you use your word to touch us this morning. We love you and thank you for your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Having the heart of Jesus, we dive into this chapter. You can do some reading later, some of the headings in uh, your Bible will give some of this away to you at a quick glance, but as I've already mentioned, a very busy and exciting time in the ministry of our Lord. Now, let me give you just six or seven things quickly uh, that our text this morning comes on the heels of. It's a time where Jesus has uh, healed the crippled man that we read about and, 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 and study in Scripture. It's a time where he's called Matthew, the tax collector, to follow him. Matthew is not a popular individual because of the line of work he was in and those that he had uh, robbed and cheated. So he called Matthew to follow him and be one of his disciples. And then we have uh, 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 Jairus, the daughter. His daughter had, uh, as he thought, uh, uh, died. And uh, he made his way, as he made his way uh, to that uh, home, we know that he was uh, uh, touched by uh, the woman, as we call the woman with the issue of blood. And uh, the that, that worked her way and pressed her way through that crowd. And you know the story. Jesus says, who touched me? And the disciples said, Lord, what do you mean? Who touched me? All these people said, no, somebody has touched me because virtue has departed out of my body. And we know because of 
her faith. She was healed uh, by touching the hem of his uh, garment. Then he continued to go to Darius' house and raised uh, his daughter there from the dead. Then uh, as he began to depart, uh, they continued to follow him. And we have the story of him healing two blind men that came to him uh, for a touch. And then a man that was possessed with a, a, a demon and unable to speak, Jesus touched and uh, cast out that uh, demon. And that man was able to uh, immediately speak clearly. And so we see now the busyness, but also the excitement of everything that's gone on. And people are following and wondering and looking to his greatness. And so the crowd is there and Jesus now comes to this transition really uh, in this passage of scripture uh, where verse 35 tells us that he went all, about all the cities and villages preaching the gospel and healing okay those that he came in contact with uh, to now transitioning to our thought that we see in verse 36 uh, that's interrupted by those words but when he saw the multitudes when he saw the multitude. That word but there acts as a transition. So all this is going on, the excitement, uh, uh, the popularity growing amongst the crowd, the healings, all this is taking place but. And when we read that word, it kind of slows the text down a little bit. But. And then what happens next is what I want us to focus on this morning. And I want to start by bringing our focus to the people. The people that were gathered, or referred to, I should say, in verse 36. You see, the Bible says in that verse, towards the end, that these people fainted and they were scattered abroad. They were scattered abroad. It has the idea of a sheep going astray and leaving the path of abundance, leaving the path of safety, leaving the path that they are familiar with and getting into a unfamiliar and unchartered and dangerous path. That is the idea we're giving of the multitude referred to in verse 36 when it says they were scattered abroad. And as our Lord surveyed the multitude, he saw that they were scattered, but he also saw that not only were they scattered, and I don't just mean physically, they were confused. They were confused. Sure, they had heard about his healing and his teachings and were following to some extent, but they were scattered uh, and they were confused. They were people that were seeking means of uh, a provision and blessing, but they were not going about it the right way. You ever seen somebody, have you ever been that somebody, searching for something, but then you realized you were on the wrong path to find what you were searching for? And you realize, wow, this is leading to nothing but frustration and emptiness and, and fatigue. They were on the wrong path. They were searching for blessing. They were searching for provision. But in their minds, they were confused at how that came about. So they were traveling down the wrong path. They were not going about it the right way. Now, need I even apply that this morning to 2021? Do we not live in a society that's confused? Do we not live in a society that we say we're searching for something, but we're searching for it the wrong way? We're going about it the wrong way. We're walking down the wrong path. Path And we have uh, become a people that I would say more than just physically, we are scattered abroad. We're confused. We're, we're a scattered society. Would you agree? We're all over the place from where we used to be and who we thought we are and what we, what we know, but now seems like what we think we know. And then when you collide that with spiritual matters, my, oh, my, how scattered we are as a society. You'd be amazed if you took a video camera and a notepad and went and stood in front of any large retailer here in Wilson County and spent several hours on any given Saturday asking people, are they saved and how they know they are saved? I think you would be shocked by the answers you receive. You would hear a range of uh, of responses 
that would not match up with each other. Some people saying this, some people saying this, some people giving a clear definition of salvation as it's outlined for us in the Bible, some giving things off the wall, some giving answers that somebody's told them, some guessing at the answer. Well, we're scattered abroad spiritually, even on the subject of salvation, much less the doctrine and the things of God. We're, we're scattered abroad. We're, we're confused society. I read this week where a biological male won a beauty contest in Nevada. Need I say that again? <laughs> a biological male won a female beauty contest in Nevada. How are we not confused? What God made so simple, we have tried to add hundreds and maybe even thousands of proposed genders when God has made it very clear. But we're confused from top to bottom. Those that control the, the handprints of our society are confused people. The, the so-called creators or leaders of our social media platforms, as much as they think they have it together and appear to have it together, let me just tell you something. They're confused. They're confused. When we ban, this is not a political statement, but when we ban any POTUS, okay, when we ban the most powerful voice in America from using social platforms, but then we promote these dragon queens, drag queens, pedophiles, what they are, to come into our classrooms or that we promote this for our kids, we are confused. We are sick as a society. We are scattered abroad, not knowing where we are going to end up. What's wrong with this nation? The world, our adversary, has so sown the seeds time and time and time again from every different angle until they're finally beginning to break down a very large portion of our society. And because of that, and because people have left the church and, and left the authority of the church and not committed themselves to the church, which is the word of God is the pillar and ground for truth, and his church is the pillar and ground for truth today. And because we're getting the bad from the world and we're not getting the good from God's house and God's word, we have Christians today, professing Christians today, who are confused and scattered abroad. Not knowing what they believe, not knowing what they should accept, not knowing what they should reject in their life. And I'd say more and more people are not suffering from a lack of information today, they're su <coughs> suffering from a lack of truth. Amen. From a lack of truth. Our society's tried to put truth in this gray area, right? And all of a sudden we can't have the right and wrong. You can't tell me what's right or what's wrong. And I can't tell you what's right and what's wrong. Amen. What was once obvious to us all is now blurred. We're confused. We're scattered abroad. As the Lord said of the multitude here in this passage, and just as they were that day, I see so many in our day, they have no peace in their lives. You know people do a good job at putting, putting it together? And putting on a front, so to speak. Amen. When they come to work, when out in the public, or when they're at the neighborhood cookout. But you know what should break our hearts? It's countless people that return back to their homes. And lay down their head every night. Amen. Without an ounce of peace. Amen. In their heart and their mind. So confused. So ran over and in turmoil in their own inner processing, not knowing, not knowing the Prince of Peace, the, the one stabilization that we can have in this world that helps us stand on firm ground when everything else is so rocky. They have no peace, they have no assurance in their lives, they have very little stability in their life. So, as Jesus surveyed this multitude, he realized that man, they have. No sense of direction. Have you ever thought that about our society too? Like, man, where where are we headed? <laughs> you know, sometimes things are announced and, and, and begin to swing and one it's like, and we have no sense of direction. We don't know what we're doing. And we have many today that have fallen in that category of just 
just following the crowd. By the way, isn't that the easiest thing to do? Isn't that the least resistant thing to do? Just follow the crowd. Just get in. Hey, they're doing it, so let me just let me just get in the mix and not say anything, not stir apart, and just go along. What the crowd indicates is right. This multitude was merely wandering aimlessly through life, willing to embrace. See, they were searching for something, but yet they were willing to embrace whoever, whatever, had the ability to meet their current need. That's true today, isn't it? So many people willing to embrace whoever and whatever will meet their need. They're willing to sign up. These people had no sense of purpose, no sense of direction, no real meaning in their life, no one to guide their path. And so the great shepherd that we read about in Psalm 23 sees the multitude, sees these sheep. By the way, we do know how sheep are identified, don't we? Man. They're not the sharpest crown in the box. We'll put it nicely. <laughs> and so the great shepherd sees the multitude, sees the sheep, and says, Man, they're lost, they're scattered, they, they have no sense of direction, they have, they have, they have, they're so confused, they have no settledness in their mind and their heart. They're scattered sheep with no shepherd. And how that reminds us, me, of the time that we live in where people are, have been so saturated with the gospel of Jesus Christ that, and the gospel has filled most of this land and this nation, but yet so many people still wandering aimlessly through this life. How is that so? How is that so, church? How can the gospel be so prevalent in our nation, yet so many people still be so lost and so confused? We live in a very sad state. We live in a very confused state. We live amongst people who have very little hope for the future. We live in a society where we quickly move from one program to the next, don't we? From one movement to the next, from one thing to the next, trying to find that provision, trying to find that guidance in our life. So here's the truth. I believe it's a society we're saturated with individuals we're spiritually illiterate yeah. on a very large scale. Mm -hmm. I'm so well. I'm so confused. And that's not a bust, that's just a reality as we as we're fixing to feel the conviction and the part that we play in that. And I go a little deeper and say the sad truth is the modern church. Should probably shoulder most of that blame. Yeah. For on a large scale, we have failed to provide family after family with what is really stable yeah. and what really matters. You know, for a while, and this is this is years back, it still exists today, but not as much. You know, for a while, what I heard as a leading question for folks. Looking for a church? What programs do you have? Y'all with me? Y'all remember? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not against programs. I love the kids. I, I, I love the youth. But, I mean, Brother Caleb's doing a great job. Brother Tim's doing a great job. Our, our, our students. Look, we're not knocking programs. But I'm telling you what has bothered me. We've had churches that have become program-oriented rather than gospel-oriented. Amen. And they depended upon programs to bring people and keep people and reach people. And I've always said what you catch them with is what you keep them with. And if you catch them with programs, as soon as those programs dissatisfy them, guess what is going to happen? They exit the church doors, and it may be the last time. It may be in their mouth. That's a burnout. That didn't work out like that. We have got to reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. All these other things come in and are part of that. And we're thankful to have a full-time ministry, a church and ministry here. But listen, if we do not reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ, then we are not reaching them. Amen. We're entertaining them. We're pacifying them. 
We have to continue to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what we need. So the people here were confused. But notice, as we continue reading, we see the people, but notice the purpose here in verse 36. But when he, Jesus, saw the multitude, he, Jesus, was moved with compassion on them. Here I believe we see the true heart of Jesus. His ultimate mission comes out in this passage, does it not? Write down a reference Luke 19.10, if you don't mind. Luke 19.10. I believe we have a great representation here, Luke 19.10. Here, many of you turn there. I'll turn there with you. The Bible says in this verse, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. For the Son of Man has come. This is why he came. This was his purpose. This was his heart. This was his mission to seek and save those which are lost. Bible says. And in Mark 10, 45, the Gospel of Mark 10, 45, for even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and what? To give his life for a ransom for many. The Gospel, Jesus Christ dying on Calvary's cross, why? So that every man, woman, boy, and girl that was born into the sinful flesh and the sinful nature could have a chance to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and be redeemed and be born again, having their sins washed away. By the way, that's the gospel message. Yeah. I tell you, what else we're confused in society? I told you, if you went to Walmart or anywhere else and asked people how they're going to save you, it would be a variety of answers. Folks, there is only one way. Amen. And, and we, uh, hey, that's an offensive statement. We, we don't apologize, but there is only one way. It's a truthful statement. It's actually a loving statement because what's offensive is someone that will stand up and tell you there's multiple ways, or there's another way, or you can try this or try that, or whatever works for you. You know, my friend, that's offensive because that's someone not loving someone enough to tell them the truth, ultimately sending them down a path that's going to lead to damnation and hell. There's only one way, and that's through the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. And he died for all men. And he gives every single man more than one job opportunity to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Promise. Lord. That was his purpose for coming. Lord. Hey, that's our purpose. Hey, our purpose as a local church is not to entertain you. <coughs> it's not to entertain you. It's not to pacify you. It's not, hey, it gives us a body to come together and to worship as brothers and sisters in Christ that we saw started in the New Testament. But our mission, our purpose left by our Lord for us is to go into all the world and help seek and save those which are lost. To preach the gospel message to those that are dying without Christ so they may come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, be rescued, be forgiven of their sins, be given a home in heaven. That is our mission. That is our purpose. Amen. The heart of our Lord. Amen. His purpose here as he saw the multitude. Notice the Bible says he was moved with compassion. Notice it says he was moved with compassion. Not just he, oh, this is, this is, this is the breakup. Yeah. Not just he had compassion. You see, all of us are going to say we have compassion. Amen. And we want to see souls saved. And we want to be a witness for Christ. The Bible will tell us that he had compassion. It does. It says he was moved. <coughs> With compassion. There's a difference like that. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a difference in words. It's a difference in meaning, isn't it? He was <coughs> moved with compassion. The word compassion means from the pit of your stomach. <coughs> Great time to ask this, right? Have you ever felt so sick? That <laughs> you felt somebody just kicked you right in the stomach. And even going with physical, physical sickness, I'm sure there's probably been many here that have been 
when I say sick mentally, I don't mean, but you've been so disturbed, you've been so, that in your gut, you just felt <clears throat> like somebody kicked you or punched you. The feeling that comes with that, not the sickness, but the feeling that comes with that, is what describes this word. Okay? Our Lord wasn't just walking and saw the multitude and said, oh man, we have compassion on him. This was who he was. And when he saw the multitude so scattered and so confused and so searching for something, I believe, I believe the knots. See, although he was 100% divine, he was 100% man. Mm -hmm. Still on this earth. And I believe the knots were internal. As he was moved with compassion, the multitude. Seeing that they were lost, seeing that many of them, although they oohed and odd over, over his doings and his miracles, they're lost. They're dying. If they did not receive him as the personal Lord and Savior, they would die and spend eternity in He was moved. As we think about that this morning, could I ask you a question? Are we moved? Don't misunderstand me. I didn't ask you if you had compassion. Are we moved with compassion? Do we have the heart of our Lord to see a multitude that's so scattered and so confused? Does it move us anymore? Do we take time to notice? Are we at all concerned of the spiritual needs? Of others. See, the truth is, we know. We know that there's a need for salvation. We know that Jesus Christ is the only way. We know that if individuals reject Jesus Christ and try to get to heaven any other way, that according to God's word, which is the only authority we have, that individual will die and go to hell. We know these things. But does it move us? The heart of our Lord that we see here. Adrian Rogers said this, and I quote, Perhaps the worst thing is not that we don't win souls. Perhaps the worst thing is not that we don't share, referring to the gospel. He says the worst thing, you ready? Is that we don't even care. How many people sitting in churches across America today that that quote would be true about? We don't even care. Now, we may not verbalize that. We may not act like that. 